Now I want you to bring yourself onto your mat. If you've just ventured across our live stream here without the intent to practice, just consider that you've come to the stream for a reason. Clearly you're on social media, so you have a little time, a little space. Even if you're coming across this recorded session later on and it's not live. Hey Stacy Ferguson, welcome. I want you to just take the time. Stacy's in the house. She's in the house. <laughs> take the time to create a little space. Patrice, welcome. Patrice B. And set yourself up in this child's pose. And then I want you to just begin to breathe. It doesn't get any simpler. The way into the practice is so simple that it's the hardest thing we can do. When the mind is trying to do, the greatest challenge is the act of non-doing. And we want to get there. We deeply, deeply want to get to that space where we can just relax, bask in our body, within our mind, without the stresses and excesses. So before we work through the postures to wring out all those tensions, we take a moment just to set the foundation, tap into our breathing, and feel the body that we brought to class. From your child's pose, let's take the arms and just walk them a little longer down the mat. And take your hands over to the left side. Feel your right side body just receiving a little length. Use your breath, really project that breath into the sideline of your body. Feel the exhale really extend like that fogging of the mirror sound. Beginning to enact your breath even more as we move. Take your hands to the other side. Finding a little balance through both sides, but just notice our sides are not symmetrical. Notice those differences. Nurturing areas that need it, pushing the boundary when this area is ready for it. I want you to come back through center. Maybe you stay there a bit in child's pose, give the forehead a little massage. Otherwise, we're going to find our cat and cow tilts next. Hey, Autumn, welcome. Hey, G. So when you're ready, you're on all fours, and you're just going to move through the range of motion of your spine. You know this movement well. Nothing we're going to do today is going to be surprising. Too new. Maybe the flow might differ. Maybe some poses, some variants might differ than what you're used to. But it's not about exploring what's new within all the form. Remember, the form is what we get bogged down in, attached to. The cycles that catch us and trap us. We want to use the forms to break from the form. So here, we're trying to peel away from that mold your spine is often in, literally sending your spine into every other possible space. Feel the sensations there. Notice what surfaces. Use that sensation to explore even deeper into that range. And take five to seven more breaths, setting the foundation. We've not even added any postures that engulf us in that fight and flight panic. Instead, everything's been real smooth, and that's even harder. That means the breath is only conscious at this stage. It's not yet been amplified by our practice, by the postures, but it's beginning to be. Feel that. Feel it open. Feeling things stir up, free up. Jennifer, welcome. If you're just joining, we're moving in cat and cows. We're about through. We're going to shift. If you need more time, you just take it. Next, it'll be a downward facing dog. Letting the hips up lift. Get a sense for your hands as they press into the mat. Spread the finger, spread the toes, maybe the feet even separate a little more. Maybe the knees bend slightly more. All of that allowing you to lift your hips a little higher, feeling the chest drop a little heavier, head shake out a little heavier. 
Then I want you to take just three to five deep breaths. Sounds fantastic in this space. I want you to do the same at home. Let that breath really spread into the room you're in. And then let's get going into the core. Take a high push up, breathe in, and just hold there. Now from your high push up, I want you to come right down to your forearms. So a lot more stable base. Matter of fact, a little more isolating into the core given the nature of the integration through the shoulders here. It's a little harder to sag down into those shoulders. Just simply feel the elbows pressing into the earth and just gently feel like the elbows are trying to pull together. Feel what that does across the chest. And then very subtle, feel like the elbows are trying to pull apart. Feel those two active lines of muscle working separate and then engage them together. Pull the belly in. Take one more big breath Simply melt your hips slowly down to the ground. For a sphinx posture, the elbows are prepared. We've just relaxed tremendous engagement and that feels good. So we follow that urge to open into that space of tension. And that's the entire practice of asana. You build the pressure, notice the leaks in the system, release the pressure, and in that space take the time to plug those leaks, to empty the waist out. Now give it one more breath, just enjoy it. And then drop it on down to the ground. Exhale. Come up to all fours, hands and knees. And then from here we'll continue. Kick your right leg to the back. And stretch your left arm to the front. Notice the leg and arm are not so much lifting as they are lengthening. When the belly pulls up and in, it prevents the leg and arm from going up too high and really allows more length for you to breathe into. End to end, inhale. Elbow to your knee, crunch together. Now send it long just one more time, then bend your back leg, reach back, grasp the foot or the ankle, and notice the alignment in your body. Your spine is the flexible element. Your leg is very strong. The core is holding it together. We don't want the spine to celebrate its flexibility. So drop that left shoulder down a little. We don't want the leg to just be strong. So stretch the leg a little more with that space. Little balance across both ends of things. For just one more lifting, stretching breath. Re-extend the leg and arm just for some relief. And then the hand comes down. I want you to kick your right leg out to the right. And let's pump that leg five times. Five, four, three, two. Hold it up, number one. Lift it higher and then drop the foot back down to the ground underneath it. Lift up into your gait pose. So you're gonna slide the right hand down the right side leg. Lift that left arm up and across. Look at these wonderful models. That was like synchronized. This is actually a well choreographed, planned, narrated. We've been doing this for three weeks now, guys. Are you ready? Take one more breath. And then bring that left hand and sweep it down by your left side, maybe fingertips, maybe a block to help leverage. And then stretch across the whole right side of your body. It's almost like a side angle, but instead of the knee being turned out foot flat, you're braced on the knee. Not a lot of activity for the inner groin, so feel like things are squeezing together there. Nice, and then back to all fours. Just a simple dismount, come out of it. From your all fours position, let's take it into a downward facing dog. Let's get into the action a little more. Feet together, lift your right leg straight and strong. Breathe it up. Take your knee to your nose, crunch there. Lift the leg back up, breathe in. Right elbow, crunch that knee. Lift the leg again, inhale. Across to the left side. Lift it again, bend your top knee, peel open through the right side body. Step your foot forward, crescent lunge. Now for 
crescent lunge, that front knee has a strong bend, but we don't want to sag down into flexibility. We want to strengthen those muscles there. Feel like the front foot is pulling into the mat. The back heel is driving. Let it shift back beyond the ball of the foot a little more. Pull your belly in and feel the tuck of the tail it promotes. The deeper stretch through the front left hip. Nice, looks great. And then above, press the hands if they're not. Drag that tissue up with a breath. And place your hands to the mat, high to low. Maybe the right leg hovers as you move. Maybe not. Work through your vinyasa. And find your downward facing dog. Now I want you to take another breath in. And a breath out. Come out to a high push-up, and from there, just bring your knees to the earth, not on all fours, just high push-up with knees down. And now from there, take a breath in, and then just very slowly lower down to the ground with the knees supporting, all the way down to the earth. Now for a cobra stretch, extend the legs back, lift the legs, lift the hands, lift the heart, breathe in, and then drop back down, exhale. Come up to all fours yet again, hold there. Now normally, you might go right into down dog, we'd use that little modified flow as our vinyasa. If you ever need that in class, you just take it and skip that chaturanga. Now from all fours here, kick your left leg behind you and stretch your right arm to the front. End to end, take a big inhale. Elbow to your knee for a crook. Send it long again, breathe in, bend your back leg, reach back, grasp for the bind. Feel what happens in the body. If you just take a breath in and things flow by tendency, by the nature of your body, the heart will open 100%, the leg will feel tight. So we take a little from flexible heart, dropping shoulder down, and we give that to the leg and find the boundary there of that front hip. Take one more breath into that tender space, Re-extend the leg and arm. Just the hand comes down. We're gonna hover the left leg out left and pump it for five. Pump it, four, three, pump it, two, and one. Hold it, lift the leg higher and drop it down. Nice work. Lift up off the hands and let's slide the left hand down that left side leg. That left foot is just gently turning forward. That just protects muscles from disengaging. Otherwise, we just sag into the knee, the hip joint, engage those undercarriage spaces. And feel one more stretch through the right side. And then sweep that right hand over yonder to the right side. Lift that left arm. Take it across. Feel from the left foot, which is anchoring the tissue down, the belly, which is sucking in the slack, and the left arm, which is stretching that tissue across. And with one more breath, fill through that space. And then take it all fours, hands and knees. Send it back to your downward facing dog. From your down dog, feet together. And please lift your left leg up, breathe in. Knee to the nose when you're ready, exhale. Send that leg back up, breathe. Knee to the left side, elbow, breathe out. Send the leg up again. Take your knee across to the right side. Lift it again, bend the top knee, peel open in that space. And let's step the foot forward, crescent lunge. So simple. Giving those arms a little rest. Lifting them into the sky, letting the lactic acids that saturate flow down and assimilate into the body. Feel the legs now working, squeeze them strong. Feel that it only takes a given amount of muscular engagement to set into a pose. When you're there, feel the muscles that aren't engaged integrate. Feel all those muscles integrated, squeezing even more to protect. Instead of going deeper, Think about pulling tighter so the breath has something to push through, something to influence and oppose. Take one more inhale, drag it back. 
and then place the hands to the mat. Take it high through low. Work through your flow, whether it's an up dog to down or you land to the ground, take that light cobra, meet us back through all fours to a down dog. From that down dog, I want you to just walk your hands back to your feet and let's settle into a rag doll. After that little bit of work, the body should be warmed up. A flow which is a personal favorite of mine, really a lot of teachers teach what they've been taught, what they've pooled in to their own practice. In the end, we can only teach from our own practice. Lest it be we're just regurgitating something else someone said, considering consciousness in the moment, considering the layers and levels of the self in any given moment. That's the practice. We only use these forms to create that philosophical enterprise. That's it. The body holds us down and grounds us into this reality, which is so hardened and so inevitable, and we suffer. But we have this urge within us to ascend out of all of that to someplace ethereal where we can move freely without being bogged down. And this asana, this practice, this method, and there are many versions of it, infinite in fact. That's how we get there. How do you get out of the swamp when you're bogged down? Well, you trudge out of it. You lay flat, you crawl out, you grasp a root, you use your strength and breath to pull to shore. And we get to do that every time we wake up in the morning, peeling away the residues from the days before. Now, if you're here joining us, some of you are, just adding in here. We're in a rag doll, perfect time for an addition to class. Take another three deep breaths. The models here are just enjoying gravity and there's a tension to it. If you're in any pose, just even rag doll for too long, the panic builds and that's what we want. The panic settle in, the body misaligning and we try to find center, find breath and remain the warrior. Now from there, let's bend the knees a bit and you bring your hands to your low back. We're just going to give it a nice deep stretch through the chest, through the spine. Lift the heart a little bit just to create the room. Bend the knees to tuck the tail out and then feel the arms punch back. What's up, Carly? Welcome. We're at the back of the mat. We got knees bent, pulling the arms back, reaching the heart open. Some of you might even drop the chest and drop the head, maybe the knees bend more to protect. We don't wanna to round too much. Feel the hips still elevated. Take one more breath through those arms and then release them and shake them out for just a moment. From there, walk it out to a high push-up. Holding in your high push-up, I want you to hover your right foot off the earth. Take a breath in. Bring your right knee to your right elbow, crunch it. Three-legged dog, lift the leg and bend the top right knee. Take a big breath there. Step your right foot forward and take a runner's lunge now. Just bring your arms like airplane wings. Front of the room, reach your arms. And then from there, crescent lunge. Continue, feel that core, the back muscles contracting to draw you up. Take another little back bend up. Airplane posture now, the back foot lifts right off the earth, relieving that right thigh by putting the weight into the bone stacked through the right leg. Lift the heart, that'll create the engagement through the back, crunching and coiling up the energy. Lift the back leg, use your breath. Can your arms reach to the front of the room? It's only gonna be one breath, I want you to rise up now. Bring your knee to your chest, stork pose, arms reach. Take your time now, bring that left foot in for a tree pose. Early in our flow, let's cut in to some of this energy with the stillness of balance. But only the body gets still here. Your breath is deep, things are flowing. Try to reach the arms up. Try to play with that subtle urge for a back bend, opening the left knee out. Take just one more breath there. And then just bring your feet together and your hands to the heart center. Sweep the arms up, big breath in, 
And then swan dive, huge exhale. Halfway, inhalation. And high through low. So mixing in a little of that sun A energy now. Drag to an up dog, or maybe not. We'll meet it back in downward facing dog. Big breath in. Big breath out. Take a child's pose, please. Drop the knees, take them wide, not because you can't push on. Child's pose is not a defeat. It's not a rest, it's an enhancement. It's an enhancement, it's a time to let things calibrate. You ever go into the woods, it's dark, you were just inside, you can't see a damn thing. After a while, things adjust. The darkness becomes light because all that blinding light Tones down, calms its buzz, its energy, its excitement. That's where we are right now. Now, if you want to remain there doing just that, you can. But there's another side of the coin. You could come up to all fours and then take a camel pose. Rising up to the knees, rising to that challenge of amplifying, which is just letting the breath rise and fall. That's it. You find the form. It's not important. We have many forms. They're infinite. But every form pays homage to one action, breathing, that's it. The breath is the god of this practice. It's the life force that moves in and moves out. They call it the Holy Ghost, because it's never present. That's why in the end of this practice, we pay homage to a corpse, to the fact that we are not part of the swamp. We're just bogged in it for now. And we can rise above it, catch a little dry energy, a little sunlight, a little air. Can you take one more breath where you are? It doesn't matter if it's camel or otherwise. You'll end up back in child's pose for just a few breaths. Resting the forehead, pulling the hips back. Take a moment. Take a huge inhale. And take a huge exhale. I want you to meet in a downward facing dog. Send it back. Come out to a high push-up. From high push-up, lower down on the forearm plank. Now remember which elbow landed down. And then come back up to a high push-up. Just to keep things balanced and muscle memory, land the opposite elbow. Coming back down, forearm plank. And then lift back up, high push-up. Stay with it now. Hover your left foot. Breathe in. Left knee, left elbow, crunch it. Now three-legged dog, feels good. Lift it, straighten those arms, bend the knee, feel that space. And then step it through, it's only runner's lunge this time. The arms are gonna float, arrow pose, like airplane wings, stretch those arms back. Good, a little core and back muscle, reach your arms to the front, a little extra weight into gravity, and then continue and rise up, pulling those muscles to their tightest with a little bit of a back bend, and then take flight, lift the back foot. Simpler energy now, just a little balance integrated. Now from there, can you reach your arms forward? Very similar flow. And then continue and rise up. Knee to chest for relief, it's tree pose. And it will bring relief, that sturdy connection of heel into thigh, or Heel into calf, turning two legs into one rooted. Opening that knee out, pulling the belly in so the slack draws, feeling above the hands press to drag that tissue into one point. And through a breath, drag it even higher. Both feet together, hands to your heart. Take a massive inhale. And cleanse it out. <sighs> let's do that again. In breath. And really let something go. <sighs> Three ohms. Inhale.
In breath. Exhale your arms down by the sides. Next breath sweeps those arms on up. And then a swan diving. Exhale, let it go. Halfway lift, crown to the front, lengthen. High through low to your degree. You could skip it as well. We're gonna meet in that down dog. What do you need? Do you need the extra? Do you need to reduce the friction through the shoulders, the spine, the hip? And then from that down dog, we're gonna do it again. Tippy toes, front of the yoga mat. Halfway, fold it over. Sweep on up to standing tall. And swan diving, release it. Flatten out your spine. And take it high to low, push up again. Simple sun A, you know it well, you've done it many times. It's not about the movement. The breath is brand new, not that concept. So I want you to take three more sun A's, tippy toes when you're ready, front of the mat, and then your own time, you're breathing with the movements, letting the breath take the center stage. Not me and my direction, not your neighbor and their pace, not even the body in its sensation, that's just the first level. Once the sensation becomes momentum and the endorphins allow for that pain relief, things become fluid and we become the breath, it's presence, it's unfolding. Now most of you have a couple sun A's left, always rest in between. Or if you only need two sun A's and then child's pose is for you, you take it. Maybe you're moving a little faster and you're gonna move through four sun A's in the time these models do three, that's fine. You're gonna end up in a down dog or a child's pose when you're through with these few sun A's and you'll just breathe and allow what is to saturate your experience. Now again, when you have had the sun A's you need, you're in a down dog or a child's pose. Take five solid breaths. If you don't need that time to rest, you're in down dog and your challenge is to use the pose and the breath to assimilate the energy you've built up. If you're in child's pose, please let it recalibrate. So when we move into the next stage of challenge, you have some space to fill up, to further saturate, sponging out where you are. We'll give it just another breath's time. In and out there. Next inhale, tippy toe, front of the yoga mat, step or flow. Taking our time, halfway. Forward fold, let it go. Come into your chair pose, settle into it. Feel the weight drop down low. Center of gravity, dipping, but not sinking and sagging. Feel things suck up and in. Squeeze the legs together. That's gonna pull the energy up. From the knees to the hips to the belly, feel that energy draw up. Feel the heart expand across the space of the collarbone. Shoulders relaxed, maybe spread the fingers more and turn the pinkies in slightly. Not only does that cross the bones and the forearms, but it drags the muscles to spiral around that space, using some mechanical energy to help lengthen. Now, how long do we need this posture? What does the practice say? What does its great teachers and harbingers say? What does Iyengar say? He says, when you're ready to come out of the pose, it's just begun. Was that Iyengar? Son of a bitch. 
whoever said that's a real jerk, but they're right. And you can stay in this pose longer. Everyone in this room is feeling it already. It's been 10 breaths or so. You just said it. <laughs> I did. There are no quotes. I remember getting in an argument with my philosophy teacher in college. He said, this was a quote by this person. I said, who is that person? He said, oh, he's a person in history. I said, is he alive now? He said, no. Is he dead? Yes. Where is he? Where does he exist? There are no quotes, really. Everyone sees the quote through their own perspective anyways. It's the same with the posture. There's no chair. There's only Roman's experience here and now with his next breath. That's it. The chair is just a consequence of being in a body, having an urge to pursue power. That's what this practice is about. It's not about light and peace. It's about pursuing power and learning how to contain it in a vessel without it scorching the vessel itself. Instead, it burns out and clears the lining and purifies wholly. Can you take three more breaths? These guys can. They're gonna sink even lower. Two more, that's it. In the face of the challenge, approach it, see what's there. Nothing but breath. Take one more and then let it go. Halfway lift, lengthen out. High to low, push up, nice work. Use that flow to cleanse the waist from your alignment and send it to a down dog. Feet together, right leg lifts, bend the knee and open. And let's take a warrior number one. Step the foot forward. Dial the back heel down, feel that connection. Settle into hips that are squaring towards the front. Feel the breath begin to work for you. The posture means nothing. Everyone is in a posture right now. Is everyone doing yoga? Can we do yoga? What is yoga? Yoga is a state of consciousness. In the writings that crafted this very practice in ancient times, it's very clear. We've achieved the posture when we're no longer thinking about whether we've achieved it or not. When you're at the concert and you're waiting for the band to start, you are so anxious, time is just inching by. And then at the end for that encore, it just boop like a cloud of vapor it just passes us like there's no time, no space. That's where you want to find. And believe it or not, the best way into that sensation is through the tension of the nervous system and the breath that it promotes. But you've got to guide that breath through it. Take another big back bending breath and bring your hands down to the ground. So simple, high to low, clear the challenge out. Nothing fancy getting in the way. There's you, there's that one pose, and then there's a breath. Feet together, lift the left leg when you're ready, bend the knee and take it to the other side. And take your time. There's no rush. Find the yoga in the posture, not at the end of class when there's no choice, right? When we're basking in those endorphins, that's not the goal. In Buddhism, there's a very clear tenet in this practice. Joy is the absolute greatest maya. And that's two meanings. Maya means illusion, but think about it. Everything is an illusion. So joy is obviously the greatest illusion you could ever construct. But in the sense of pursuing power and liberation from attachment, Joy is the greatest illusion because it's the type of illusion that we can sit with, attach to, and not realize the detriment it creates to our practice. We don't come in here to experience bliss at the end of class. The bliss should be the emptiness, no longer attaching to the pains or the pleasures that heavy us down and finding a neutrality within ourselves, an essence. Can you take one more big inhale before you put it down, high to low, rinse that challenge out from your vessel, gather it upward facing some pose that opens and send it out downward facing dog or child's pose and take three long breaths. It's Sunday morning, you've had a long week, 
The friction added to the body is not the goal. It just makes us feel normalized because that's what we do to abuse ourselves in our work week all day. We push the physical and we feel achieved. All we're doing is burning the wax, lighting the candle. We want to gaze into that fire and notice its nature. Feel that wax, see how much we have left conserved. On your next breath, take it tippy toes, front of the yoga mat, step or fizz out halfway. Fizzled, exhale, good. Chair pose, rise for a breath, and then let it go. Exhale, ride the wave halfway, lengthen high through low, upward to downward. Step the right foot when you're ready to. Breathe to warrior one for a singular opening breath. Plant your hands. Notice how long your breath has become. That means your posture is long. That means the oxygen's getting into the deepest layers of these postures. Left leg lifts. And that's the name of the game, getting the life force into the layers of your vessel. Not moving the body through heightened friction, demanding motion, that's not the goal. That means you can't do yoga as an 85-year-old invalid person. That doesn't make sense, does it? Everyone has yoga within them now. Even if they have no legs, the consciousness of breath, the presence of the moment is there. Take one more inhale. Front of the mat, step or hop. Halfway length and fold, please. Mm. Chair pose, arise. And then it falls as everything does. Halfway lengthen, high to low push. Drag from the heart space. Meet back down dog. It's going to be that warrior one on the right side. You'll take a singular breath, but then we're going to open and meet in Vera number two. Considering the term warrior, it's a great avenue to understand this practice. Back in Boston, there's a center, the Shambhala Center, and the Buddhist monks there have controlled this Shambhala way of the warrior for 53 separate generations. And what they believe the warrior is, and I'd say they're the authority, 53 generations of doing what? Well, in their belief, a warrior is any human being in the present moment being conscious of consciousness. Because if there's one human, consciousness is preserved. We don't disintegrate fully into beasts as long as we're progressing into that spiritual journey. Holding the space for those who can't. Being a warrior in that moment of challenge for those who cannot or have decided not to. Can you take three more breaths here? And we're holding these poses a bit today. Hopefully you at home, you're there in it, staying strong. These guys are. Flip the palm, reverse that warrior. Side angle is gonna promote some relief. Once the elbow lands, feel the bones from shoulder to heel all stacked up. Maybe drop the hand to a block for a little more leverage, a little more stability. <clears throat> Just five breaths here. Top arm, maybe reach it to the front. And like Roman's displaying there at the front camera, rotating the pinky down. Just like you were reaching your arms up in a back bend, pinkies in, palms back. Feel how that brings the shoulders away from the ear. Integrates those muscles into the back body. For just another breath or two, can you reach the bottom arm to the front? It's core supported side angle. And then reverse your warrior at the top, straighten out that front leg and then build your trikonasana. Pull the hips on back, reach that right arm forward. Open the heart across to the left side of the room. Now the hips pull back, but they also shift towards the left side of the room, and that brings your shoulders more towards the outside of the right shin. Back foot has a little aim forward, lift all 10 toes, and then suck the energy of the thighs inward. Two more breaths, can the top arm reach? Maybe bottom arm 
for just this last reaching breath, then rise up and out of it. Take it to a warrior number two, settle into it. Flip the palm, big reversed warrior. Runners lunge, plant the hands for a moment. Lift your right arm up into the sky just to counter all that energy we opened. Right, the energy of that triangle which sucks that hip back. Now we're dipping that hip down and in. Feeling one more breath in that space. Bring your hands to the earth and lift the front leg up into the sky. Bend the top knee and flip your dog. And say hi to these models. This is the best view. This is like the sitcom frame at the beginning of the show that you see where it's like, dee -dee 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 -dee. all right, take one more big breath. High push up. Lift your left arm for your side plank. This is it. We're finishing a long sequence. Maybe the bottom knee's down. Better would be top foot down. Then you can still lift your hips. Or lift the top leg, top arm reach. Take one more breath. High to low push up, rinse it out. Drag it on up. Send it on back. That's down dog. Release something. Ah. Slow build, slow build. That's what you want. Long, slow, and deep. That's the practice in its expert nature and its mastered nature. Now from where you are, feet together, left leg lifteth. Bend the knee. Step it, it's warrior one, becoming warrior number two. Find your breath, focus into it. Now given the fact that I felt it this morning, I think a lot of you watching this now are watching this later. Because right now, you're asleep. You're relaxing. But later on, you're gonna get antsy. All the yard work's done. You've cleaned out every closet three times now. You're ready for some practice. What is the practice? Well, it's a little physical movement. We don't wanna be stagnant. The physical movement promotes that surfacing of elements hidden. But then what do we do with the elements? Do we just keep moving? Ignoring those elements, they keep surfacing and keep surfacing. And we empty and empty and empty. A lot of benefit there, but then we'll just fill right back up. Notice in this present moment, for five whole breaths, what the substance of fear, of panic, of tension is. And as they say in the mysteries, subdue that passion. Passion is what? Suffering. We're all passionate. Every morning we wake up with extra passion to then take us through the suffering of our day. And we go to bed emptied and exhausted of it and filled up with something else, a residue. Flip the palm, take a big reverse breath in. Land the elbow to the knee, shifting perspective a bit. Out of the challenge, right? Giving some of that energy that surfaced in that challenge to the energy of this opening. Burn up that residue and let it cleanse the spiritual fires. Now, can you take a solid five full breaths there? Top arm might be reaching. Nice, just a few more. Some of you on the last side reached your bottom arm. If you did, do it now. Reach that arm, really breathe, and then reverse up and back at the peak. Straighten out front leg. Trikonasana draws the hips on back. Riggedy reach. Set up Trikonasana. Feel the mechanics of the pose. The hips draw back. The heart doesn't round down. The hand is pushing down to lift the heart up. And once the heart lifts, muscles can take over and then the weight comes out of the hand. You use the sandbags to ground down the hot air balloon. Once the heat is to temperature, things are safe. You know you're gonna go up safely. You release the weight and you allow that upward lift and it continues to the edge. So top arm might reach further upward and that carries the heart a little higher. Gives the breath somewhere to go. Bottom arm maybe reaches. Now you're at your edge. 
Only place to go from there is all the way up. Nice. Front foot's gonna pivot to the right side of your yoga Matthew. Toes aimed in. Hands to the hips or interlace your hands. Take a back bender there. And then a forward fold or you're playing with headstand. Maybe you're playing with a crow. Maybe you're playing with a wide-legged seated fold. Maybe you're gonna take a bucket headstand like Roman. Headstand gang, forward fold gang, arm bind gang, you know, we're coming around. We're coming to your city to stretch you out. That's the threat with the yoga gang. It will come into your house, we're gonna stretch you out. That's just a forced yoga gang. You just hold someone down and you create panic by scaring them and then once they're scared, you just tell them to breathe. You're just like, listen man, we were kidding, now just breathe. Boom, progress. That's what we're doing with the posture, right? You've got a cup of water. It looks quite settled, but what happens when you shake it up? Oh, all that junk, particulate matter at the bottom, all hidden from view, comes up, fills the water. So what do we do to get that out? Each little invisible thing is so embedded there. We heat up the water. It vaporizes. The water lifts out of that gross realm and into that vapor realm and leaves the junk behind. That's what we're doing. This practice is just the water cycle. When we go upside down at the end of class, you're literally letting the energy rain back down into a body which is fertile soil, purified and cleansed. Can you take five more breaths there? So in the end, yoga is not some ancient practice, hard to grasp, it's just the water cycle. You're 80% water, right? In the Bible it says you are the salt of the earth. What is salt to our body? 80%. Without that salt in the water, the electricity, the currency of our life force would not flow. So hey, I like being salty, you know what I mean? Take another big inhale. Let out a big breath. Please walk your hands to the front of your yoga mat. Keep the right hand there and just give a nice stretch open to the left side of the room for a twisted lunge. Not too long, just a nice counter. Feel that the front knee's bending, yes, but feel like the front foot is pulling and that lifts the hip muscles. Engaging, what's up Dan? Take one more breath. Bring the hand to the ground and send the front leg skyward. Bend the top knee, flippeth the doggy. Land the feet squared up. Now everyone has a different form. There's so many different variations. Roman's flip dog has a triangulated stance, which is probably the most stable. He has his hand in between his two feet. Sometimes you put the hand squared with the foot that it squares with. Take one more breath, give it a high push-up, and take it to your side plank. Now let's analyze side plank, lift your right arm. Now if the knee were to come down beneath you, that's support, but then the hips can't lift, we have no more oblique muscles working. So instead, maybe bend the top knee and land your top foot. That'll let you lift higher, and once you're lifted, the muscles can engage and you might hover that bottom foot. That's how we use props. Top arm reach it, top leg kick it, give it one more breath. High to low, nice work with control. Don't lose it now, it's not over yet. Breathe it up, open, and send it out, down dog. Ooh. Please take a, a child's pose. No complaints there. Don't look at your watch. Take that watch off. Throw it out in the river. I worked at another studio. It was uh, in Boston. And we had an issue with people bringing their phones in. You know, people like, oh, you know, my kids are at home. But are they? Are your kids really at home? Do you really need to talk to your kids for an hour? Don't you have some mechanism to protect you from that? So there was a little bit of an order that said, hey, you can use your phone outside the studio, but not in it. So what did all of these affluent, intelligent people did? They brought these watches into class. And they all said the same thing to me. I said, you know, the studio said no phones. And they said, it's not phone. 
to watch. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna fight you in the back. Throw that phone out. I'm just kidding, by the way. I was messing with Sue. She doesn't check her, her watch a lot. She's not a, she's not a bad yogi. It's kind of she doesn't need no watch. She's got, she's got no friends is what she's saying. She needs no way to communicate. I mean, she's, she's just so enthralled in her practice these days. What like 20 years ago when we had no watch? I know, 20 years ago. Do you remember like a time, like I watched an old movie and the person had this emergency. It was like, oh my God. And she was like, it was poltergeist. And she waited all day to tell her husband that the chairs float around the room. I'm like, she would have called it in a second. <laughs> We're going to come up and do another camel. Text them. Rise up to your knees. Bring your hands to your low back. Take five breaths in this back bend. Then we're gonna do a little bit of abs. Yay! Now if you notice these models here, elbows are pulling together behind them. That keeps the back body engaged, which sends the breath through the front body. The belly engages, which sends the breath through the front upper body, and that protects the low back. Can you take five solid breaths? Some of you might bring your hands to the heels or ankles. That might be more possible with the toes curled under. If it doesn't need to have toes curled under, you might do it anyways just to leverage the pose like a prop. Two more breaths. Let me hear that breath in here. These models are slacking. Listen to their last huge breath. It's gonna rise them up. And then they come into a child's pose. Look at that. Never seen even a preacher rise up some people like that. You gonna rise up. We're gonna burn some residue. Take another big in and another big out. Let's do abs now. Oh, all right, Sue. We're doing abs according to Sue. Come up to all fours, back to your down dog. Voice sounds really weird there. Maybe you gotta <coughs> clear your throat. Step or hop through your arms, come onto your backs, and let's do 100 bicycles. We're taking it to Abdominalville. Set it up, and one, two, three, four, breathe. Ha, shh, shh, shh. 10, good, one, two, three, four. Slower pace here just to get the good alignment. Heels are kicking, toes will spread there. Elbows wide, the lower the leg, the more the work. Now breathe, last 70. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, good, 69, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, halfway, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, last, 49, eight, seven, six, five, three, good, now slow, 39, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, slower, 20. Nine, 18, 17, stick with it. Last 14, 13, even slower. 10, nine, eight, seven, don't quit. For five more, four, three, two, long bodied stretch. Don't fight those muscles. They're cramping up. I want you to lengthen them and take a big breath. Oh, good work, guys. That was palpable. Bring your knees to your chest. Plant your feet to the earth. And lift into a back bend. I always recommend starting with something like a block under your low back. And if you don't have a block, guys, Amazon.com sells blocks, I heard. Really awesome to use blocks, even if you're like expert, leverage that pose. So you use a block a bit, you do a little back bend, open things up. That way when you do come into that more challenging, less stable posture, a little more precarious, you're open, the right muscles are engaging. The breath has that relationship with that engagement. So you'll make a choice. Do you stay where you are? Maybe there's a block there, maybe hands are interlaced. 
Do you come up into something deeper? Look at Sue. She's like, oh, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this yogi toes here. I'm going to plant these hands. I'm not slipping. And I'm going for it, baby. Take seven more breaths wherever you are. Some of what I say is deathly serious. As a matter of fact, one of the most powerful books I've ever read is Death and the Art of Dying by the great Rinpoche's of the Buddhist method. And that's where we end up in this practice, right? It's about corpse pose. It can be pretty morbid, pretty dreary, pretty drastic. But it's not. It's just a play. It's like at the end of a long play, Hamlet feels so serious, but then you walk out and the play of your life continues. That's it. We're just metaphorizing that cycle in here. It's safe. Can you take one more massive breath in the bend you're in, wherever it is, and then come down, take your supta bada konasana. Soles of the feet come together, drop the knees out. Take a hand to the heart, take a hand to the belly. Take a huge breath in and let me hear it. Now bring your knees on into your chest. Give yourself a hug now with equal energy as that release filled with some gratitude. Gratitudinally, as Roman says, we're gonna rise gratitudinally. He doesn't say that actually, but I just blended a few things he says together and I liked it. <laughs> Roll a little front to back. Set up for your half pigeon. We've got plenty of time. We've got another hour here, guys. I'm glad you could join us for this special session. Ooh, Sunday. Three hour flow and chalk. They call it Sunday because it's the beginning of the week and it takes vital principal energy for any entity to unfold. So let's consider the entity of one week, right? Which starts with the sun and ends with Saturn. The sun is the fresh, bright Sunday. life force of the universe, of the solar system, our universe. Saturn is the old empirical empire builder. That's why we call it Kronos, because Saturn is time. Before anything existed, Saturn was there. And this is just the story of the week, which is the story of every religion. You've got Christ and his 12 apostles, Hercules and his 12 labors. The sun and his 12 houses. The first house is Aries, which is fire, and it's the fire of intellect. So to begin a journey, you gotta be a fool. You gotta think you can do it. That's why the first card in the tarot, Arcana, or the last card, is called the fool. Taking a breath in is a foolish act, as the Toltec Indians say, because you gotta give it back. To have a breath is to give you life, and to possess life means death might arise. It is a foolish act to live a life, because you can't keep it. It's foolish to buy roller skates and not use them. You grow out of them, so use it. Use everything you can in this moment. Saturate your attention with everything available without injecting from your own self, absorb from the self you don't see. Let it guide you. They call it the higher self, but it's not higher. It's further inward. There is no up or down. In the mimetic tradition, it's like a spiral, they say. It feels like you're in the same place. Oh God, I've been here before. I made this mistake last time. But when they visualize it, you're on a spiral and the spiral is cyclical, and as you go downward or upward on that spiral, it feels like you're at the same node, but you're one step above, you're one step below, and that's what creates the illusion of up and down. It is just a circle, but it's moving forward, and our mind draws us backward through it, but really, it's wholly present now, just like those Buddhist arrangements of one calligraphic line in a circle all the way around. Perfect. What begins must engulf itself and end. Just as our child's pose at the beginning of class, infantile, unaware, undeveloped, stagnant and not quite ready for that unfolding, 
to corpse pose. Nothing left to do. Total completion. Finality. I want you to take yourself to the other side. Time is the great balancer. Memento mori, as Marcus Aurelius said, remember that you're mortal. And that's homage to Saturn. That's why Christmas time, before the Christians took it, was always called Saturnalia. In December, Capricorn rules. And what does winter do? What is the energy of Capricorn? Well, winter is when all the life around you comes to an end and becomes one singular blanket, one substance of frozen, waiting, incubating in that frozen for the time to come when it can shine again and push out of that egg of purification. So let's complete the story. Saturn ruled. The sun shined lovingly without discrimination. All it does is give. That's all it does. It doesn't intervene. It just gives and gives. And Saturn ruled that energy like a parasite because that energy exists within time, which Saturn controls. And the earth was subjugated like a slave. And the moon was not able to form. Saturn did not allow the moon to help balance the earth. But then Jupiter, the young hero in our tale, in every tale, Jupiter got so big, Saturn said, uh-oh, this young man is just a child compared to me, but I'm getting old and Jupiter can kick my ass. And Jupiter remembers when the earth cared for him when he was a young child. So Jupiter says, you know what, Saturn, you can have time, we don't want it. You can control all of space, but leave the earth alone. The earth formed the moon, which balanced all of its dualities. Humans were created to hold that vital principle and the unfolding began. But there was a bet made. That's why Saturn is Satan, Mephistopheles. Jupiter made a bet, give us that space. We're gonna unfold a beautiful, beautiful utopia. Saturn said, okay, the more energy we put into it, the more stable it becomes, the more utopian it feels, the more our foolish enterprise will fall when it finally does, that's it. And that's a beautiful premonition to have. That means when it happens, there's no fear there. That's why the book written by those Rinpoches is called Death and the Art of Dying because you craft it yourself. It happens now, in this moment, death will occur. You think it's in the future, but when it comes, it's right now. You'll have a relationship with it, with this consciousness that's here now, no different. Everything else will be scraped away, but what's present now. Now from where you are, I want you to take it upside down just like the hero journeys into Hades, the underworld, to gather that information to climb back out of the mud, we did the same thing. And we let it come back. We've vaporized our essential nature. We've confronted the dross that remains left behind. We've scraped it from that lens, cleansing. And now we're gonna shine the light through and notice the shadows that are missing, the distortions cleansed out, the clarity of that essence. And that's what asana provides. It is a cleansing for your vessel. But what do we do with a cleansed vessel? I don't know. The masters tell us we die with it. And that's all they'll tell you. The rest is for you to decide because there is no book for the other side of things. There's no book, Life in the Art of Living. That's yours. That's literally your name. That book is you. But the other side of the coin, we're all sharing it in the moment. Our life, nope. Totally unique and individual. But that breath you're taking, we share it in the moment. That consciousness you possess, it is ours. It is we. Take another couple breaths. Maybe your pose goes deeper. What's up, Maggie? Welcome. Not Maggie Pinto, but Maggie Lanka in the house. Lanza, Lanza. It's fun listening to me try to pronounce names. I'm sorry if I butchered anyone. 
Now slowly I want you to unravel onto the mat again. Take a nice full length body stretch. Reach your arms back. Extendeth the legs to the front. Breathe through all the vertebra in the body. 33 vertebral segments, nerve segments. That's why Christ dies at 33 because if it's the vital principle and the book is an allegory for rising and ascending through the conscious levels, there's only 33. Take your knees to your chest, drop them over to the left side, just for a gentle twist. Funny enough, in the tarot, there's also 33. There's 22 arcana and there's 10 numbers. In ancient Hebrew, there's also 33. 22 paths, 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, just like the arcana, and 10 numbers, 10 fingers, that's it. Take your knees to the other side. Just as the story of the planets, the story of that character through the 12 labors, the story of you through those segments of your spine, from the root, dormant, unawakened, all the way to the peak, ethereal, subtle, godly, divine. Take it back through center, little happy baby. Lengthen the spine. And think about what divine means. It means of the vine. What is a vine? A vine is something which grows out from the mud, rises up, and bears fruit. That's the practice. This practice is divine. Because you come in, you get into the mud, you plant a seed there, and later it bears fruit for you. Just like any intention manifests if you intend it fully. Maybe not now, but it will. That's Kronos. It comes back. Our models here are settling into their final Shavasana form. The legs have a separation between them. The arms, same from the body. Palms up. Let everything relax. Downloaded a lot of stuff today, a lot of allegory. That's a different type of knowledge when we talk in metaphor. Subjects which are parabolic. So we're gonna take a little empty space, a little time, I want you to do nothing. You work the body, you work the mind. Do nothing now, just feel the presence of that subtle breath and bask in the nature of that attention. Take a huge inhale, hold it in, sip a little bit more, and let a big breath ah.
within your essential space of awareness here is let your person come back. Person means by sound. You are the vibration that you radiate. Ahead and reach your arms back take a full breath in feel the vibration build again and take your knees to your chest let something go exhale and fall over to one side they say persona means mask the mask is the space between you and what's outside The mask is the tone, the frequency of vibration between you and how it harmonizes or creates dissonance with what's inside and what's outside. Set an intention. Don't force the intention into your day. But allow that intention to be natural. Allow it to build, allow your day to create a space where that intention can unfold. And then find a comfortable seat. Rise on up. <clears throat> Take your hands to your heart. Take a deep inhale. And let out a breath. Exhale. <clears throat> Three ohms to close. Breathe in. Bring your thumbs to your forehead center. And remember the vibrations within this vessel recognize the very same vibrations within yours and all others. Take a breath and we'll bow and say namaste. Namaste. Good work, guys. Thank you so much for coming, y'all. Remember to share this, like it, follow, send it to your neighbor with a dagger and a note. <laughs>